after this crazy party weekend. It's finally about time to head to the studio and make some music. Fall track really sounds good even on those tiny airpods. Today is mostly taking care of business things and tomorrow I have another session with a singer and songwriter from the UK. So I have to prepare a couple of things and actually the first thing I wanted to prepare is a new logic template. So basically a template or an auto load is just like a file, a logic file or Ableton file or Cubase, whatever DAW you're using that is empty and gives you a faster starting point whenever you start with a new track. So I don't start with like a blank logic file. I always have preloaded plugins in it. I have preloaded effects that I use on my sends and returns. I also have like my bus routing all already done whenever I'm starting a new project. I think it's pretty obvious why you should have a template auto load. It just makes everything way faster. For example, I always root all of my drum elements into one drum bus where I apply parallel compression. And if I had to do it on every single project that I start, it just takes five minutes, which might not be a lot, but if you make like 50, 60 or 100 new tracks or track ideas a year, it definitely adds up. And if I have like a creative good idea, I don't want to like stop my flow by having to root things and take care of technical things. So having this already pre-done, pre-made, it's definitely a big advantage. So if you don't have an auto load or template, just do one for you. You could either open up your last project that you're satisfied with it and delete all of the musical stuff, the MIDI and the audio and just leave the channel routing and the plugins in it. Or you could just start from scratch and, and build something new that you can work with. I just decided to open my fall track. That's like my last track that I'm pretty satisfied with, especially from the mixing side. So I will just open the track or actually copy it here onto my desktop. I can now definitely delete all of these things right here. Just make sure that's a copy and you do not actually delete your track. I can also delete all of these channels here on the side. And also the drum MIDI parts can be deleted. I will also get rid of the markers here on the top that I've set to know where the chorus is, pre-chorus and all the other parts. Because that's something I have to do individually for each and every track. Also making it shorter because I usually start working just in, in a 4, 8 or 16 bar loop. So these six folders here will stay at the top. The first one is the sidechain kick trigger. It just has the guys drum sequencer on top of it with a four to the floor kick. It is really just there to trigger everything. The second one is actually a folder and within this folder you have the kick, the top kick, clap or snare and a hi-hat. That's usually what I go for with four to the floor house tracks. So this can definitely stay. Let me just get all of the levels right to zero. You always have to be really careful if you screw up your template, if you have a mistake in it, for example, the hi-hat pen to the left. Every time you start a new project, you will have your hi-hat pen to the left. Um, that's something you will notice, but sometimes you have like a compressor setting somewhere wrong and you're wondering why it sounds strange. And then you find out that you actually had this mistake left in the template. So be careful, test your template and make sure there's nothing weird left in it. By the way, if you're wondering why I have this folder for my drum stuff, I have like on channel 3, the Geist, and all of the separate pads in here are rooted to the different channels here in Logic. So I'm just using one instance of Geist and it's rooting it so that I can, for example, EQ the top kick or the snare separately with the Logic plugins without having to do it here in Geist because the EQ in Geist is pretty basic and this way I have way more control and I don't use that much CPU otherwise I would have to load Geist into each and every channel and just have one element in it and it's just a big CPU waste. Another advantage of having this folder and the drum stuff within it is that I can apply my parallel compression to all of the drum elements at once I'm using here the glue that's like a 
nice SSL compressor emulation with really extreme settings and I just mix in 5 to 7% of the wet signal to get the parallel compression sound. Next up hitting X, it gives me access to all of the channels that are within the project. The green ones are all of the drum elements. I will actually give them another color. I think blue is good for drums. The sidechain channel gets uh, lighter blue. And now getting rid of all of the plugins that are left from the fall track. I don't need the Neutron on here. I don't need the EQ here. I will get rid of all of the EQ settings and all of the sample delays that I used. And also getting rid of all of the send effects because this also varies on the project. The rest of the channels that you can see here are effect channels that I've pre-set up. The first one is a reverb. I'm using here the Valhalla Vintage Verb. It has just 40 milliseconds of uh, decay time. This is a very small ambient reverb that I would usually use for hi-hats or other small drum elements that just need a tiny bit of reverb that you can't really hear. On bus number 4 is a slight variation of this reverb. It has 0.5 seconds of decay time. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit longer and has a tiny bit of pre-delay. On bus number 5 also a reverb. This is usually the snare or clap reverb that I use with 0.7 milliseconds of a decay time and the size is a lot bigger than on the other two. I think this reverb really sounds natural and fits to most claps and snares that I use. I also have on here from the project a sidechain compressor to trigger the sidechain on the reverb. This can be useful in some instances, that's a reason why I will deactivate the sidechain. I might use it, I definitely won't use it on every single track. And the same goes actually for the EQ. I usually try to high pass the reverb to make it sound cleaner. I will also deactivate it for now. Channel 6 has also again the Valhalla Vintage Verb. It's definitely my favorite reverb with a live Vox chamber preset. This is a perfect reverb for vocals. I like to have it on here and depending on the vocal, the style and the tempo I might change it later while working on the track. 7 also a reverb. It's usually used for synthesizers or guitars instruments that need a tiny bit or a whole lot of reverb depending again on the track. Bus number eight is the final and last reverb. It's a really huge concert hall reverb with 15 milliseconds of a decay time, size all the way up to 100%. I use this on effect sounds, white noises, rising stuff and everything that just needs a very long reverb tail. Next up are the more fun effects and echo. I'm using here the Logic Echo and that's actually the first one I will replace. I don't like the echo of Logic, it's very boring. And just a couple of days ago I got new plugins by Soundtoys. It's like an entire package with I think 20 or even more plugins that are all effect plugins, distortion, echo, reverbs and I just like them. I had them already as like the 32-bit version then you had to upgrade, I never did. Now I got this upgrade, I got all of the plugins. They're all running again on my computer and I have to say I really miss them. They are just really great and they have a lot of nice presets that you can definitely always use and they are way more unique than any other effect plugin. They make things that would be otherwise very time intensive to do and with them you just do it in an instance. So I will definitely replace all of the delay effects I had here in this auto load. So replacing the echo by the one from Soundtoys, it's called Echo Boy, and of course selecting it as a stereo. This right here is the Echo Boy, it takes probably care of all of the echoes you will ever need. You can set it to a single echo mode, where you can change the echo time, the feedback and the mix. You can also choose a dual echo mode and like have two echoes run at different times. Of course you can also set it to a ping pong mode and a rhythmically echo that is 
doing just crazy things. The next plugin that I have on my Sense is the Crystallizer. That's this one right here. And the last one by Soundtoys for my auto load is the Decapitator. That's the distortion unit. You can go very soft and just give sounds a little bit of character or really destroy them depending on whatever you want to go for. Next up is the H delay. I use it mainly on vocals just in case the reverb isn't really enough or the vocals sound boring or standing on their own too much. I add a tiny bit of delay to make them more interesting. Bus 14 is usually my last bus. It just has the logic chorus on top of it. I use it to make things wide. Sometimes vocals or backing vocals pads or strings anything that just has to be in the background and really wide and then comes the last bus probably the most interesting i definitely won't need the magic Q. i will have on here the ssl compressor by waves i like to mix into it but just like one or two db of gain reduction next up in the chain is the l2 limiter i will leave it turned off actually also the compressor both things i apply whenever i have like a loop going and the span analyzer is something I definitely will need. Before saving this as my go-to template, I actually need to erase all of the old audio files that are still in this project. The file size is right now 3.5 gigabytes because all of the old stuff is still in it. So I need to get rid of it before I save it as a template. Otherwise, every track that I will start now has 3.5 gigabytes added and that's definitely not good for the small hard drives in my MacBook. Just go onto file and then just cleaning up the project and you get to check those three right here because you won't need any of it and just delete it. And to get rid of all of the audio files you have to go into project, select all of them and then delete them. The last and final step is then just clicking onto file and then saving it as a template. If you want to you can also open up the logic settings and choose for the starting process instead of a new and empty project one of your templates and then you just choose the template in this case the 2017 template and now every time you open up logic it will just load your template file instantly and you can start working with all of your preset buses effects and channels i can only recommend you to have a template it will make your working process a lot faster and the next time you work on something creative you won't have to find the right reverbs and everything especially for tomorrow where I have the session with the singer and songwriter it's important to just work fast and being able to concentrate actually on making music. Now also because the singer and songwriter is coming tomorrow and I won't be really able to take care of business things for the next three days and I also have a lot of business stuff from the past three days I would try and take care of all of it. done with the boring business stuff now comes the giveaway of the headphones um, I already announced the winner yesterday just need to pack it up and send it to Nitra wherever this is da -da -da. I hope this will reach Benjamin again congrats and the next giveaway will be probably in a month it's again of course extremely late Heading back home and you should definitely not miss tomorrow. I will pick up the singer and songwriter at the airport then straight here to the studio making another really cool vocal track. I... Does this also remind you of the worst track submit edition? I think you probably still all remember it and I think it's, it's time for another one. This was definitely a whole lot of fun.